I went to all boys private school. So my first tattoo, I had to hide it uh, my senior year. I literally wore a sweater uh, every day to school. Had I shown them my tattoo, they would probably expel me from school, so. Uh, <laughs> about 16, 17. I think it was just kind of one of those impulsive things. Uh, I was with my friends one night. Uh, we went to a tattoo parlor. I opened the tattoo book uh, and the first tattoo I saw, uh, I got it. Um, so <laughs> that's kind of how that went. <laughs> I don't know what it is. I'm from the Seven Ward in New Orleans. Our mascot is kind of like the skulls. This tattoo has seven skull heads in it. It was kind of like a demonic mask. I don't know what kind of creature this is, but I thought it just represented my dark side, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> the second tattoo I got, probably these crosses uh, on my leg. These are for everybody that, that has passed away in my family, friends, close people to me. So I have all those initials uh, on the side of my crosses, just right on the inside of it. Um, and I have a little quote that I actually came up with. No, I'm not Aristotle. It just says, when you're a star, you put God first, let your past guide and your future determine you. A lot of people where I'm from, you know, they get caught up on their environment, how they was raised, you know, what kind of things they saw growing up. And they kind of let that determine their future and who they become. Um, and I never really wanted to, you know, let my circumstances kind of dictate, you know, who I was, uh, who I was gonna become in the future. Louisiana is just everything. They mean everything to me. And I think anytime I go back home, you know, it's just so much love, so much genuine support. And um, so I always keep Louisiana close to me. The next one I got was probably this one. The Jay-Z song actually inspired that tattoo. You know, we reach adulthood and we lose a grasp on, you know, who we were as a kid and what kind of things really made us happy. Just try to keep yourself fresh, experience new things, and don't be scared to meet new people, try different things. I really wanted people to see them, you know, when I was playing sports. A lot of tattoos that's on my arms and on my legs express, you know, who I am. And it just says King. And then I have the world with the crown on it. I think it's just important for us to be the kings and queens of our world. For me, it's just always a constant reminder that, you know, I am the king of my world and I really hold my life in my own hands and um, it's nobody else's responsibility really but mine. This right here just says for the family. This is my adopted dad's birthday, 4 or 5, 1967. You know, uh, my father's in prison for life and um, I think had it not been for my adopted parents, um, I don't think I'd be here. Just really grateful, you know, for the opportunities that they gave me and um, really the inspiration that they gave me to be better than, you know, my father or, you know, anything that was really around me. I'm really into different cultures. I love meeting new people from different spaces. So on this arm, I have the Chinese food dog. Most Chinese people have these in front of their house and it's kind of the symbol of protection, keep evil away from you. This is my spirit elephant. I kind of think of an elephant as a guide. It also helps me with a lot of patience. This is probably one of my favorite tattoos, actually. I think I'm a spirit animal. <laughs> I mean, I am a honey badger, but. <laughs> And this one is the ump. I think anytime you could read people's spirits and feel people's vibes, ultimately you have the key to life. You know, you're able to navigate through certain spirits and, you know, really put yourself in the best position possible, you know, to be happy. This tattoo right here, these are really four people. On the outside, I have Zeus. Um, he just held so much power. And then I have Muhammad Ali, Bruce Lee, and then I have Malcolm X. All three of those people they really inspired me, you know, on a different level. I think Bruce Lee, uh, I feel like he always knew his opponents. I think that's the most critical thing, to not only understand myself and my game, but to understand who I was going against. I think Muhammad Ali is one of the greatest athletes of all time. He spoke very loudly, but at the end of the day, I think he wanted, you know, better things for not only himself, but for, you know, the people around him. Malcolm X, he spoke about things that wasn't necessarily right in the world. All four of those people um, really helped inspire me uh, on a different level. This says above the top. I think everybody wants to get to the top and 
everybody wants to be successful and the idea is to never get complacent, you know, to always continue to work hard um, as if I don't have anything, you know, as if I, I never made it to the NFL. I like to live my life above the top. This is October 10th, 2012, and this is the day I met my fiance. We met back at LSU uh, and I was late for a test and my teacher wouldn't let me in because I forgot my Scantron. She told me go to the Union Hall to get a Scantron. I'm running to the Union Hall and I just, I see this pretty girl and I just completely forgot about my test. And I just stopped in my tracks, uh, you know, got a phone number and uh, I did go get the Scantron though. And I did pass that class, so. <laughs> I have this one on the back of my leg. I was number seven at LSU from the Seven Ward in New Orleans. A lot of people back home, you know, they, they, they look to me as that legend, you know, that hero. It's just a constant reminder of, you know, the platform that I have, the responsibility that I have, and it's a reminder that my whole community is behind me. Um, and um, so uh, it's just a constant reminder.